right, we're rolling. Welcome back, y'all, to a new video. And this one is agreed by the title. We're talking about the brand new Sony 85 G Master 1.4. Sadly enough, for some folk, it's not the 1.2. But either way, it's one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about it in this video. The 85 millimeter is beloved by lots of people, by professionals, by casual uh, photographers, by people who shoot portraits, anything like that, corporate headshots, family photos, photo ops. People tend to love that focal length. I do too myself. It's great for couples. Um, it pinches in real nice and tight, which people like a lot. It brings the background a bit closer when you are shooting. And this is really a refinement to an already classic. Every brand makes an amazing 85 from like the affordable standpoint to the very high end. So really what they did here was they just improved on something that's already a banger and they just made it a little bit better. Now I'm gonna put up a photo of what the 85 GM2 1.4 looks like. I don't have one here myself, but essentially it's gonna have a aperture a dedicated ring. It's got the G Master button itself that you can use to customize, which is great. Um, it's got uh, it's a great weather shield construction that the G Masters are known and loved for. Um, it's nice and sturdy. Um, even comparing it to like not physically because I don't have it with me, but even this lens is pretty decent quality. As you can see, like I bang this up and I, I use it a lot. So for that, I'm pretty sure it's absolutely amazing in person. So kind of going off of like the top end spec, it's going to be built amazingly. And one of the best things I want to talk about in the build is going to be the weight. So it's actually. Not, I don't want to say significantly reduced, but enough for where you should feel it in the hand. So just kind of going off the spec sheet here, the 1.885, this one is 370 grams. Nice and light, very fast lens, love shooting with this. The original one, the 1.85.14 is 815 grams, and then the new GM2 is going to be 642 grams. So roughly around 200-ish difference of, in weight. I Again, I don't have them side by side to tell you, but I can compare it to like an iPhone, for example, in my opinion, when they made a titanium version of the of this phone in the max size compared to the steel one before that, I personally feel that there is a bit of a weight difference. Even though it's minor in the hand, I think it can make a difference. And the main reason why we want to carry this lens is because it's a quick, fast prime. It does a job, and you can ideally take it with you anywhere. I think that's what's like really nice about it. Just still st sticking to the design and the build quality of the lens, I do want to talk about the dedicated aperture ring that's on that lens. This one just has a manual focus, a autofocus manual focus switch, and then this dedicated toggle that you can customize, or you can use it to like refocus. What I like about the GM2, and as well as the GM185, is that it has an aperture dedicated uh, ring at the lens, which I like that a lot because I shoot in aperture priority mode a lot. Um, when it comes to scenarios that I have to be quick and I don't want to like fiddle my manual settings too much, aperture priority is one of my favorites. And to have that directly on the lens and you can have it with a click or a de-click option, I think is great. Can also be cool for video too, if you want to sort of like uh, change up the look of how you're filming. And then the aperture on that thing is 1.4. so. It's obviously amazing. I think that when it comes to shooting lenses today, this is just a smart refinement on what's already great. So it's really good. And I think that Banger, they nailed it. I wanna talk a little bit about the auto focusing system on the 85 uh, 1.4 GM Master 2. Now compared to like the 1.8, um, I do wanna talk about this because I obviously I own this and I can speak on my experience. Oftentimes the autofocus when it comes to um, the focal distance that it's recommended at, it does pretty good. Um, anywhere between like eight to 12 feet, if you're taking portraits of people, it does a solid job. If you're too close, it definitely does too much of a focused breathing. Like you'll notice and you'll hear the motors kind of like pulling and pushing and trying to find that focal length. And it takes time. It, it's kind of slow and this is a fast lens. So at times that can like hold you back in, in my opinion. But I will say, when I saw obviously video reviews of the GM1, uh, the first one that came out, that autofocus is a lot better. So what I would like to do is hopefully get that as a review unit and kind of see for myself what this faster autofocus system is. In my experience, I have shot a Sigma 1.4 in a 50 and obviously a whole different lens, whole different everything, but I'm curious to know if that being that it's more aperture blades and different uh, linear motors, does that change the formula of how we use the focusing point? Because that one was just incredibly fast. I don't want to get too off topic and talk about the brand, but um, the point of me saying that is, is that it's a refinement of something that is already good because this is okay. And the previous version of the GM was 
really good for my SE. So hopefully that's something that's like nice and smooth. And it's no secret that uh, video is very important nowadays from like Instagram reels, YouTube, just in general. I think video is like the thing that people want to achieve and do. So when you're shooting video, I think they're trying to minimize the um, focus and breathing that happens when you're, when you're recording. This one has an extreme dynamic motion system and it provides like fast and accurate near and silent autofocus. So I'm not surprised there. Again, I would love to see that person, kind of see it for myself, feel that I, I, I'm sure I'll be more than impressed by how it is in person. GM Master 2, the 85 millimeter 1.4. I try to look up anything with uh, flaring and ghosting. Um, not really a thing I see on this lens. Chromatic aberration seems very minimal. I mean, where we are in this day technology, I think it's something that's kind of hard to see. And the ones who really notice it are like the neat, the, like the nitpicky, like the pros and stuff. I think that the average eye, I promise you, I don't think we'll even notice that. Also, most editing software like uh, Adobe Lightroom, it's something that you can uh, touch up after the fact. So I don't think that's uh, anything to worry with this lens. If anything, I think it shoots so clear and so nice and pristine that you might want to do some sort of after effects if you want to like add grain or make it more artistic. Yeah. When I looked at my reviews and I looked at uh, downloadable images, that's not something that I saw and I didn't assume that would be an issue. You look at it from a 1.4 when it shot wide open, the depth of field is bar none and, I, and they've been for a while. I mean, even on this 85, I put some pictures up of what I did with this. Even this is pretty good. Um, indoors, okay, but outdoors and you got some good light and you can really, really open it. I mean, it's amazing. So I can, again, I can only imagine what this version two is. Really hoping to get that into review. Um, I think that when you shoot with this, it's it's the premium version for a reason. And I think you're, you're getting your money's worth in this, in the new lens. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about price. So this lens is priced at 1800 US dollars. This, I bought it used for like under 400. I think I paid like 380 or something like that. It's a lot less compared to what the new one is. Now, again, I've never owned it, but this is one of those things that like it does the job. Like if you're doing a paid gig, it will do it really well. I think that if you are more of an intermediate to an expert, go the GM route. But if you're picking up gigs and you're doing things for like friends and family, I think this will do this will do you just fine. I mean, I'm just gonna focus in on that right there. Yeah. This is just this is great. This is really good glass, really solid. I, I like everything I shot on this. Is it worth the money? I wanna say it's worth it if you own this and you're going to that, because that's quite a significant upgrade, um, in my opinion, from build quality to more uh, shot of the field, the aperture uh, priority ring, better glass, everything that a GM entails compared to just like FE, you know, 1.8. Who is it for? I think it's for like professionals. If you already own it, it's hard to say if you want it. If you're one of those people who wants the latest and greatest, I think, yeah, I mean, if money is no issue, then yeah, go for it. I mean, saw your, saw your old one and pay the difference, you know, if that, if it means that much to you. For me, I'm definitely hoping to get it in the future because this is a focal length that I use a lot. And uh, I just want to cover the things that I shoot with, with this. So I'll do like a little bit of casual street photography, portrait to friends and family. I've done like some landscape shots. Um, this is really good too. Like if you want some like photos of like um, architecture, cause it's like really pinched in. But if you're just kind of getting it as a casual photographer, you know, don't fall into the hype of like getting it just to own it. Because if you know, the, the pilot isn't good enough to drive the car, then the car is still kind of, yeah. anyway, I think working on your skill and your composition, with this lens is probably more important than like splurging on the, the newest one because it's brand new. On the point of the people who are professionals, a lot of people had like their gripes about it because they were waiting on the 85.4. They expected it to be a 1.2 because uh, Sony has also a 50, mil 50 millimeter, a, a brand new 1.4, but they also have a, a 1.2 option. I could see why that's important because the competition for the new Sony is going to be Sigma's 85.14, which is also an amazing one. Pick your poison, they're, they're, they're both phenomenal. I mean, a Japanese manufacturer, those guys make top tier stuff. Do I think it's a miss? Not really. I mean, it's it's a great refinement and I think it's important for brands to do it in general, um, to make the option. And you're also sort of creating like a, 
a slow build up. You know, not everyone needs a 1.2. And if you went that way, it's probably going to be a little bit bigger. Does it, is, is it kind of like suck to see? Yeah. And it would have been interesting because there's not a lot of that in the market in general. So I think Sony could have maybe capitalized on that. Um, these lenses take years to come out with new options. So, you know, maybe in another five or six. It's hard, it's hard to tell with these rumors. I will say though, if you are considering the new one and you are in a good spot and you want to be very minimal about your lens kit, like how I am, I think that if you get the 85 millimeter GM Master 2, the 1.4, and you pair that with like a 35 or a 24, or you separate, you just want to get like a 24 7 and then an 85, like any, any of the combination of the three, I think it complements a lens kit so well, even if you go for this one. I think the focal length is just like phenomenal but i will say yeah, if you're considering the new one and you want to pair it up that way then i mean all you need is like a minimal kit don't even fret about getting like all this other stuff like to me it's not even necessary like this does it so um i'm going to conclude my my um impressions video of this new lens my final thoughts i really like it i like the sound of it lighter weight continuing on the fast technology great glass uh, sounds like the focus motors are improved. Um, format that I like, aperture ring, click on and off, customizable button up front. What's not to like? You know, what's not to like? Nowadays, all brands make great things, and it's nice to see that Sony native lenses are just continuing on the street that they are. There's a reason why they came into the mirrorless market and dominated at a time where arguably Canon and uh, Nikon went on top, and they just sort of like came in hot. Every brand does great things. I think it's a great length that, a focal length that anybody can benefit from. So if you're considering this lens, let me know what your thoughts on about it. I think it's cool. Um, again, just to close out my thoughts, I, I am hoping to get it in the, sometime in the near future. There's some other lenses I really want too that I think could complement my, my style of photography. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the video up there. Let me know your guys' your thoughts. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the views. Catch you guys in the next one.